on behalf of the Young Magazine Editorial Board, um, we hope that Alexander is, is honoured to hold this bell as what we are to give it to him. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, John. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Saturday night here in Manchester, another great night of boxing at one of the great arenas here in the world for the championship fighting. Now what makes people want to pluck down their money for Skybox office and for the DAZN subscription? Compelling fights. Fights that are meaningful. Fights that really make a difference. Fights, and this fight in particular, the type of thing that comes from a Hollywood screenplay. You know, one of the most prestigious titles, as, as I recently said in the press conference, was the heavyweight championship. But in the world of boxing, to all fighters, the most prestigious thing you can have is all those alphabet belts. To be the undisputed champion. And that's what we have Saturday night. On the line, the undisputed cruiserweight championship of the world. An undefeated champion versus a fighter who has announced his retirement after this fight, a fighter that's come back time after time against all odds, what will happen Saturday night? It's right out of a compelling screenplay, and it's the type of thing that fans want to see. So here to tell us more about it, please welcome Mr. Eddie Hurd from National Boxing. Thank you, Michael, and uh, I couldn't agree more. This fight, the biggest fight, the best fight, I believe, matchroom boxing have ever promoted. The creme de la creme. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Everybody who loves sport, everybody who loves boxing, this is the pinnacle. The undisputed cruiserweight championship of the world. The opportunity to say, you are king. These two great fighters, we currently have the king of the division in Alexander Usyk. After 15 fights, already the undisputed champion, owning these four belts, and of course, this fantastic Ring Magazine belt as well. And to our left, we have one of the greatest success stories of British boxing. A man that has refused to give up and has come back and has won British Commonwealth, European, world title belts and now sits on the cusp of, like Michael said, a true rocky story to become the undisputed champion of the world on Saturday night. A genius here and an incredible fighter to my left who talks about the potential of this being the last one, of there being peace after Saturday night. But as we all know, before peace must come war. And on Saturday night, I promise you, one of the most gripping, compelling fights you've ever seen in this country. An historic moment, the first ever undisputed fight in British boxing history. And we are incredibly proud with K2 as well, our partners in this event, to bring you a very special moment for the sport of boxing. And now, to ask the fighters a few words before we talk to Dave and Alex and Igis as well, I'm going to pass over to one of our broadcasters this event, live on Sky Sports Box Office and Street, live on The Zone in America, our host broadcaster, the head of boxing for Sky Sports, Adam Smith. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, I just want to send huge congratulations to Alexander Usyk for picking up another belt. Have a look at that. The treasure there, 15 and 0, and five incredible belts in front of him. I wonder if Tony Belly will be taking those five back on Saturday night. One for Rachel, three for the boys, maybe one for Dave as well. Let's uh, ask him. Tony, firstly, uh, training camp has been long, grueling, hard. First time in a couple of years you've got to make the weight. Are you feeling as strong as you ever have in your life and as confident ahead of this almighty challenge? I'm always confident, Adam. Uh, it's been a long camp, yes. I've been very diligent in the way I prepare. Making weight is not an issue. Alexander faces the exact same problems as I do when it comes to making weight. Me and him are very similar in size. We are basically heavyweights who have to make weight. This is this is the modern day system. And by moving the weight category to 200 pounds when it used to be I think it was 186, that's what that allowed. It allowed the, the smaller heavyweights to come down. So it's not an issue. I've shown what I can do at heavyweight. And believe you me, I will show you more what I can do at cruiser because I am only faster, sharper, 
possibly even stronger at cruiserweight. But I go in here and for the first time genuinely in my life I feel like I meet a man who has exceptional skills and exceptional amounts of talent. He has everything I have besides that one thing. And that's the, the fact that I can switch someone's lights out within one second. And I don't care what he says, what his team says, what anybody says, I've had that ability since I was 12 years old. I learned it at school, and I'm still carrying it right now as a grown man. I can turn people's lights out with the blink of an eye. It's never happened to him before, but it could happen to him on Saturday night. Either way, I'm going to find a way. Tony, people forget you had a terrific amateur career. You shared the ring, uh, both as a professional inside and under the lights, and in sparring with some great, great fighters over the years. Is Alexander Usyk the best, in your opinion, yes. that you will ever share a ring with? Yes. He Why? Is, he is the ultimate test. There is nothing this man cannot do, Adam, in a boxing ring. He's the most complete fighter I've ever faced. Everything he does is class. Listen, before this fight was done, I've always been a fan of Alexander. I've had friends interview him. He's amazing at what he does. If I wasn't fighting him, I can promise you right now, I'd probably be sitting in this audience as a fan of his. So, like I said, not that many fighters are as honest as me, but it is what it is. I think he's a fantastic champion. I remember my time in Ukraine, and he hadn't yet captured the the likes of the European gold medal, the world amateur gold medal, or the Olympic gold medal at this stage. But even then, everybody knew on that camp who he was. Everybody then knew he was an exceptional talent. Him alongside Vasily Lomachenko, uh, Lovatsky was there as well, the heavy was all spot. They're just the quality fighters. He's a brilliant, brilliant fighter. I have nothing bad. I have no disregard towards this man. I just have to beat him up on Saturday or find a way to do the impossible. I don't want to tell you how, I really do, and I, and I want to just don't belay it in my mouth, I want to say it, but then for once a little man next to me could probably beat me up now at this stage, so I'm going to just keep my mouth shut and say the only chance I have is a punch's chance. I cannot outbox this man, he is a formidable opponent, he has everything that any boxer could possibly want, and even worse than that, he's a horrible southpaw. So, He's great. I have not had no bad words out of him. I know it's unusual for me to sit at a press conference and give someone so much credit, but there is nothing I could say. Or, or I wish he, I'll be honest, I wish his English would be a bit better. I know he's bullshitting me a little bit. He does speak better English than he's letting on, but he doesn't speak good enough English so that I can have banter with him back and forth and I can get him going. So I would have ever cut off, I'm not going to lie. I do like a little bit of back and forth. But ultimately, I admire him. Fantastic champion. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy this fight happened. This is the most significant, significant fight in Cruiserweight history. The richest fight the Cruiserweight division has ever seen. And you know who brought that to the table? I did. He brings the hardware, I bring the money. Never ever forget that. I've generated something that no one could ever see from me before it. Nobody cared about me when I was sitting on the floor in Canada. As, as a failed light heavyweight, and I told the world that the reasons why it happened the way it happened, no one cared about me after the crazy, cleverly rematch, and everyone said it was terrible, told me about it, it was crap, he's this, he's that. No one listened, no one believed. You know who didn't believe? A couple of people sitting here with me, the family at home, my team around me, my father, Gary Disley, my wife, my kids, they all believed. Every one of them believed, and look where I am now, and that's what belief can get you. I've failed, I've failed many times, but right now I'm about to take the greatest step of possibly any British fighters ever took, and I'm going to do it on Saturday night. Just finally for now, Tony, I know tactics are a top secret. You've won your last 10 undefeated since that night uh, in Canada. How worried are you that this last fight, that you've gone on record and saying, you told Rachel, you told Dave, you told Eddie, you told all of us, it will be the last one on Saturday night. How worried are you about a final failure after so much recent success? Do you know what, Adam? We all fail in life. Uh, now, I have failed on a greater scale than anybody probably in this room has ever failed before. But you know what? I've also reached greater heights than, than most people in this room have ever reached before. And to, to reach the great goals, you have to take great risks. And sometimes we go wrong. Make no mistake, I can lose on Saturday night. 
if he's as good as everyone thinks he is and as good as everyone says he is, then I could lose that dinner, no problem. I've got no problem with that, but what would have haunted me much more was if I would have stayed retired. And then when he calls my name with all them belts around his waist, I just walk away, that would have haunted me. That would have haunted me, and it would have, I would I just, it would have, I can't even think about doing it. So I made the phone calls, I made it happen. Yes, I can lose this fight. Not many people say, well, yes, I can, of course I can. He's very good at what he does. Do I think I'm going to lose the fight? Absolutely fucking not, no. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to stop him. I'm going to break his heart. And you look in my eyes when you say that, and I tell you now, me know every single person will believe when I'm saying it. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get the monster. It's time to let a monster catch a monster. I'm telling you now, mate, I'm going to find a way. As good as he is, as great as he is, he's meeting someone with something inside of Noddy. I can't even put it into words what goes through my head. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know when I'm going to do it. I just know I'm going to punch him in the face really, really, really hard on Saturday night. Alexander, welcome again to Britain. Fantastic to uh, have you over here. How excited are you finally after your long training camp in the Ukraine? And thank you for letting us over to experience that. How excited are you for, for performing and defending all of those belts in Manchester here on Saturday? Saturday, Tony's predicting a war, it's his last fight, I think everything will be put into it. What about from your side? From my side, I will be doing boxing, because I will be doing what I love, and I love boxing. Самое главное, что и со стороны Тони, и со стороны моей будет желание проявить себя. Так что из этого получится очень великолепно красивый поединок. The main thing from my side and from Tony's side will be to perform our best. And that's why I think this uh, event will be a really spectacular one. Thanks very much. We don't wait. Thanks, Adam. And uh, a quick word now from, from the two teams. Firstly, I'll start with you, Igis, uh, long-time manager of Alexander. You've made some big fights in your time, and uh, we know you've witnessed also the great atmosphere that big British events bring. Excited ahead of Saturday night. Uh, hello, Manchester. Very, very proud to be here, and of course, more proud to uh, represent one of the best fighters in the world today, Alexander Russi. Um, 
As far as uh, how big this fight is, we don't have to talk. We can see that here, right on the table. All these belts talk for themselves. So, Alexander is going to be facing very tough opponent, Tony Bellew. Uh, I like Tony Bellew as a fighter for a long time, you know. I was uh, watching him all the time. After his speech today, I like him well as a person. He's a, he speaks very highly and uh, very professional. So I believe Saturday night we will see a very, very good fight. It's the biggest, biggest fight i ever been involved and I've been in a big fight. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Alex, uh, just a few words. I just want to thank you and K2 Promotions and Aegis as well. I can't believe that an undisputed fight has happened so easily, uh, with no drama, with no tears, and no punches in between the camps and the promoters. And it's been a joy to work with you and your team. Guys. Here's you. We've got another five minutes. Um, we all wanted this fight to happen. We all love this sport. And on Saturday, we get a very special moment for our sport and also a great great fight. Thank you, Eddie. Definitely, it was really a, a pleasure to meet you first and then to make it happen. It, it, it took us just 10 minutes to agree on all the issues and uh, I'm happy we're now here again in Manchester speaking to uh, media and uh, recently I have learned uh, something special about the British fans. Never ever in my life I uh, met the audience that is so deeply involved in, in, in sports of boxing and uh, just a regular fan knows more about their idol than uh, probably uh, standard journalist in the world and that, that's really amazing. Um, the crowd here is really unbelievable, is, is something special. Once Usi comes to the street people meet him, people want to take a picture, want to take his autograph, whatever. So, um, that's, that makes it amazing. And uh, Usyk had a wonderful camp. Um, he's here, ready to go. I uh, saw uh, Tony last night at an uh, open workout, and you see him now, he's in, probably he used to have a good camp as well. So, that means that uh, Saturday night, just in a couple of days, Endless days, but uh, just in a couple of days, we're going to see a tremendous, tremendous fight. Probably the fight of, that might become the fight of the decade. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Alex. Dave, a huge moment for, for you and Tony, obviously. You know, we talked and we heard from Tony about the, the lows, and it's been an incredible run since then of, of 10 fights unbeaten. And some great nights, Everton, of course, and two. Uh, David Haywins are now on the cusp of, of doing something that very few do and making history, defining a legacy and becoming an undisputed champion. Yeah, I think you touched on it when you said about Tony Bellew, the story is a successful story already. You know, you look back all the way through his career, he was never supposed to be here. He was never supposed to be here, sat at this table with all these belts lined up, facing how one of the greatest fighters on this planet. He's made that happen. You know, um, through all the setbacks, like I said, he believed, he put in the work. And I think it's a great, he's a great advert to any kid that's out there that's starting out, that's actively pro now, had a few setbacks, that just because somebody else is in front of you and somebody else is more talented than you, naturally, and maybe things are working smooth for them, they're at the top there, you're along in the way, you're getting setbacks. You keep working hard, you keep believing what you're doing, you can get there. He's at the top. This is literally the top table. You know? All these belts there, Saturday night, that's what he's going for. He doesn't have to. He could have walked away, like he said. He could have walked away. But then, there are regrets. Saturday night, there'll be no regrets. He's done everything it can possibly to get himself in the best shape. He's done the way fantastically. You know, I, I spoke with you before, and that was my, my initial worry when this fight got made. And you said, you know, it's a cruiserweight. It wasn't going to be a heavyweight, it was a cruiserweight. My initial worry was, I don't know if he can make the weight easy. It's made. I, I can't believe that. He's been so professional, and he's done everything right. And the weight is fantastic. The weight is not an issue. And on Saturday night, you're going to get the best version of Tony Bellion, and it's going to be the last version of Tony Bellion. Obviously, there's been a huge amount of respect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 
but make no uh, doubts, the two of you and, and the team truly believe that victory will come Saturday night. You know how hard it is, but this isn't about a uh, tribute act to our no. Blues. No, listen, the, the one thing that works, works for me, it works for Tony, is that we understand what's in front of us. We always have done every fight. We understand the dangers of what's in front of us. We understand what that man in front of you can do. I think if you go into a fight like this, any fight, but if you go into fight, you know, the David Hay fight, Carl Lewis, him, we do see. If you go into those fights blind, thinking, it's not as good as what they say. It's all hype. Walk into a minefield. You're going to get the biggest shock of your life because he is legit. You know, he's a great fighter. And when you understand what's in front of you, you, pre you can prepare for it. You can prepare. But we have to prepare for every eventuality. You have to prepare for being losing rounds. You have to prepare for, for being out of box at some stages. You have to prepare for every bit. You have to prepare for a dog fight. He's prepared for everything. Whatever's going to happen on Saturday night, he's prepared for. And this is why when, when you look at Extensively, and you're studying fights, studying fights. Every trainer out there, you know, you know, they all know the same thing. They've all been in positions where their man's the underdog and their man's facing a, a much better fight on paper than your man. You do, no fight is unbeatable. No fight is unbeatable. There's fighters that are unbeaten, there's no fight that's unbeatable. And if a man's lost rounds in his career, if a man's been hit in his career, he can be beat. And trust me, though you it's hard enough to knock out anybody. It's hard to knock out anybody. His brain, his boxing brain is underrated. He can box with them, he can fight with them. But there's something inside him that you could never bet against him. And how many people have been out there and said that we've got no chance in this fight, that they're not going to bet against him because they've lost enough money in the past? You know, he's one of those guys that, that there's just something inside him. That's why he's here today, and that's why he's got himself to here today, regardless of what. Any coach who's worked with him in the past, there's something inside him that takes him to this level, and you can't you can't train that. And that's that's what ultimately that's what's what's going to make sure that on Saturday night, all these five belts can go back up. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Alex Evis and Alexander. And finally, Tony, one last word. This fight for you, not really about money, not really about crowds, pay per view. This is about, I believe, testing yourself. What is it that made you accept this fight? What does this fight on Saturday night mean to you? I told everyone when I was pretty adamant, this isn't about money. If I wanted money, I could have created a bit of drama with someone like, let's just say, Dylan White, a heavyweight. I could have done a gloves off, had a roll out on the floor, done a million people you buys overnight. That's just the truth, that's the fact that I had the numbers I can generate. Uh, and I would have been double the amount of money on Saturday night. And I'm not trying to say, I'm not fighting for free, not by any way of the means, but if it was all about the money, I would fight a much lesser fighter than Alexander. And I need much more money, so I'm happy. I can put that to bed straight away. The reason I took this fight, it's the biggest challenge in my life. I always knew I could become the world champion, deep down. I knew with the right scenario, the right fight, the right location, I will lift the world title. I did think also when I left the cruiserweight division, I was the best cruiserweight in the world. When I knocked out to London McCarver at Goodison Park, he was the WBC number one for over a year. No one wanted to face him. Gregory George pulls out. I come in. Alexander was still fighting eight and ten round fights at this time. And uh, I, I done the unimaginable and I knocked out another monster against all the odds. So when this one presented itself, I did never think this would be possible. I didn't think boxing politics would allow it. I looked at the last time that a boxing tournament had happened and that was Andre Wood with Michael Kessler. I think it was the Super 8, something like that. And what happened in that tournament, politics played a huge role. Injuries played a huge role. And the belts become fragmented, you know, distributed in different ways. And there was never really one face, one name, one champion. And I thought similar would happen at WBSS, but it didn't. It all went to plan. And the man here became that one name, that one face, that one champion that every that every division needs in boxing, in my opinion. And now it's all at stake. And when he had all them four belts around his waist, the first name out of his mouth was was was, was me, which I couldn't believe. I genuinely still am shocked. Uh, I knew he knew who I was, but I didn't think I would be the first name out of his mouth. 
So I was flattered, but at the same time, believe you me, mate, I had a thought that night in the middle of that bar on my honeymoon if I could have. Uh, that's where I found out he called my name first. So I'm here now, and I'm, and I'm competing in a fight that I never ever dreamed would ever be possible. And that's what's got me off of it. I'm, I'm literally living the dream. I'm here fighting for the WBC, the WBA, the IBF, the WBO, and this little bad boy as well. It's unbelievable. From where I've come from, this was ne this was just a, a never a, a dream, an impossible dream. Even I thought this was way beyond me. I never thought this would ever happen. It's happening now. Alexander brings the hardware, and I bring the paper. On Saturday night, we're going to do an exchange. I'm going to give him all the paper he wants. But I'm going to steal his hardware. I'm telling you now. I got labelled the bank robber last time. Don't call me the bank robber no more. Call me the belt robber. Because that's all I'm robbing Saturday night. I'm robbing all four of them belts and I'm taking them back to Liverpool. Something that we never as a city, as a country, have ever even seen or dreamed of. No fighters in this country is ever going to do what I'm going to do on Saturday night. I'm going to do it. Believe you me. And you know what? Just a little palm gift. Even after this is over, this fight said he's going to go on with an invasion of the heavyweight title. Mark my words. He is that good. So I don't want to hear no shit after this fight of. Oh, he wasn't that good after all. He is that good. He's exceptional. But it's just styles make fights. And I'm going to prove that on Saturday night. I wish you the very best. I hope you're in the best shape ever. Because Saturday night, we are going to go to war. Believe you me. Blood, everything, I will give it all. But I only wish you good and success. You're an amazing fighter, an amazing champion. But Saturday night, my friend, you're going to learn how to lose. <laughs> Thank you. Um, again, an honour to be up here, an honour to be promoting this fight. We thank you for your support, not just today, but in recent times in British boxing that's enabled us to create fights like this, moments like this. This is what we live for. And Saturday night we're going to have a great night. We wish both camps the best of luck. May the best man win, and the winner will be king of the division on Saturday night. We're going to have head to head, and both guys in camps available for interviews. Thank you very much. We're all staying seated here. No one's going up.